Uh, congrats on the movie Boy Meets Girl. Thank um, you. I really liked it. How did you get involved with this project? Well, uh, it was a pretty basic audition process. Um, I was out and about in L.A. I was actually sitting in my car uh, ready to go in uh, to a, a coach of mine for a different audition. And then I was a little bit early, so this email came in for Boy Meets Girl. I read the synopsis of it. It actually didn't mention anything about uh, transgender issues even being a part of the film. Uh, it just sounded like a you know a, just a, a basic romantic comedy, and it, it seemed interesting. So I started reading it, realized what it was, and by the time I got to the end of it, I I started bawling. I was I was bawling uncontrollably in my car. What was it like working with Michelle? Because I I like a lot of other people who watched it. I was amazed. I had no idea she had never done a movie before because it seemed so effortless. What was it like working together? Yeah, I mean, she was remarkable. Um, you know, she... I, I, listen, I know that, that Eric and her worked on it for months, I don't know, six to eight months before filming the movie, so it was... The, the character was so kind of in her bones at that point mm -hmm. that I, I think that's why you ended up with a really sort of effortless feel to her performance. Um, because she really got all that time to prepare and just let it sink in. And the truth is, you know, the, the character was kind of shaped around her anyway. I mean, I think I think Eric had this idea that he wanted to make a film, and he sort of had the outline of it, and then he found Michelle, and then really kind of, uh, you know, shaped the film around her specifically. You mentioned that you worked with several coaches during, or to, to prepare anyway. Um, what what exactly made you nervous about this? Like, which scenes made you a bit hesitant to approach? Was there anything you were worried about? No, no, I, I wasn't nervous necessarily. I, I just, uh, I, I ended up working with, with two different coaches. Basically, I have a rotation of like probably about five different coaches that I work with in, in general, and they all have very different approaches uh, to acting. So I, I really just, at, at this point, I, I trust my instincts and... I go with what I feel like I need in, in any particular role. So for this role, uh, there was a guy I went to really just to work on the physicality of it mm -hmm. um, and to sort of feel the character kind of from the inside of his body, from the inside out, if that makes any sense. Um, and then another guy I went to uh, really more to work on the mentality of the character, like how he feels about Ricky, where he comes from, you know, just, just figuring out all that actory stuff that you got to figure out. So, um, and, and strangely enough, I didn't end up doing a lot of actual scene work um, because part of, I think, what was going to make the film work was a very sort of free-flowing style. It seems like transgenders have had much more representation in film and TV. Do you, do you think there's a reason why it's just seemed so quick in the past couple of years? You know, it's, it's a good question. I mean, I don't know why these things happen in society where all of a sudden uh, something like this is just so prevalent um, in, in, in media and in society as, as a whole. I mean, it, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, I, I think, you know, the, the trajectory of America has always been the progression of civil rights. I mean, that's, 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 that's just, that's what we do here. I mean, it, ta it takes a while and you got to drag people along kicking and screaming sometimes, but it ha happens and, and progress always wins. Do you think that films like Boy Meets Girl are going to help raise acceptance and understanding in society to some extent? Yeah, I would I would hope so. I mean, it's 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 an all hands on deck kind of thing, you know. I mean, you need for any sort of social progress, um, you need support in government, you need support in media, you need support in the arts. So everybody plays their part, um, and then you just need support like just around the dinner table, you know what I mean? And it's all equally important in a, in a different kind of way. You've come a long way since you first started acting. Um, if I'm correct, you were. How old were you when you first started? Were you, were I started when I was ten. Ten. How did you yeah. How did you get into it in the first place? Was it a hobby, or did you intend for it to become a big career as a as a kid? Uh, no, not really. Uh, yeah, it was kind of a hobby. I mean, I would just do my talent show every year in elementary school. That's that sort of was my favorite thing to do every year. I I I would tell jokes, and then by like third grade, I started kind of coming up with my own material and doing impressions and, and things like that. I always I always did have a natural inclination to perform. 
Um, and then, yeah, at around nine years old, I, I went to a local acting class in the town I grew up in. I lived in a little suburb outside of L.A. Um, I went there for about a year, and I just I really liked it. And I went to my parents and told them I wanted to give it a shot. They, they saw that I had um, – maybe a little bit of talent and, and it's something that I really liked to do. We, we really didn't have any expectations as far as any kind of career. I mean, I, I don't, I don't think they really um, anticipated me getting more than a commercial and, you know, saving some money for college, you know? And my first job was on the TV show, Frasier, which was like the number one show in the country at the time. I mean, it was during that run where Frasier won like seven Emmys in a row for best comedy and it was as like a young Niles, which was Fraser's brother. So I was, so I got lucky. I mean, I, I because I was good at impressions. Like I did this impression of Niles, and then I got on that show. And then once that was on my resume, it just like, it just opened doors for me. And then I started to do more TV, and then that led into other things. And then you know, and and then you just sort of build it a brick at a time. I'm, and I also just found out that you played. If I'm correct, Curly from Hey Arnold, that boggled my mind. I had no idea. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I was. Th there were a few different Curlies. See, Hey Arnold actually hired kids. Like, a lot of cartoons hire adults to play kids because their voices yeah. don't change. Kids' voices actually change. So I think they had, like, four different Curlies so over the years, but I was one of them. Wow. Yeah. And are there any characters that you get recognized for the most? I mean, you've played a couple characters that have been very popular among people. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I would say, uh, Twilight, you know, still to this day is, is the one that, uh, that elicits the most attention just out in public. Like um, people stop you in the street. Yeah, 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 exactly. If someone's stopping me in the street, uh, chances are it's from Twilight. I have gotten a little from, from Z Nation, which is the zombie show I'm on right now. So <laughs> it's, it's great, man. I got, I, uh, I've, I've managed to have some reach into different areas um very neat which is great i'll just i'll i'll do anything man i just love to work <laughs> well congratulations on the film and thank you so much for meeting with me yeah absolutely thanks for doing this and th this honestly this is an important part of the process too because the more stuff like this that gets out there you know the more people see this movie and this is a movie that i think people should see so so thank you i appreciate it absolutely really love the movie cool thanks okay nice to meet you all right you too appreciate okay, it bye take care